So flags, markers, and clip colors are easy ways to identify different parts of a project that you need to come back to at a later date. So let's dive into each one and see how they work. All right, so let's just jump right into DaVinci. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just create a timeline here. So there's our timeline, and then I'm gonna click this button so we can see the timeline because we'll end up jumping into multiple timelines. Well, what happened here? So here is our first timeline. Now there's a very typical thing that happens with most projects is when we bring in a clip, what we'll have is the video track will be blue and the audio will be green. Now let's say we are working on a project and that's gonna be the majority of our uh, content is going to be this color, right? So if I bring in another clip, that's gonna have the same sort of characteristics, but let's say that we now wanna add in B-roll, but what if this B-roll we want to have, um, you know, sticking out so we actually can notice it. One of the things we can do is we can change it to color. So I have uh, keyboard shortcuts and I went over this before, uh, keyboard shortcuts to change the color to other colors. The other thing that you can do is you can right click, you can come in and then you can pick through the plethora of different colors. To set the keyboard shortcut, we just come up to DaVinci and then we go into keyboard customization and pick the key we want. So I have my F5 as apricot and we click on that and we can see that what command comes in is set color and then set color apricot. And you can click through all the different colors. You can see my, uh, my other keyboard shortcuts that I have here for the other colors. So that's how I set the colors. But let's say, okay, so now that kind of is, you know, a little bit of a process. I bring it in and I have to make sure every time that I change that color. The other thing that we could do is we would just be able to come into here, select all of our uh, B-roll, right click, go into clip color, and then we could set it to something else. Now what you'll see is that on the clip itself, it has that little color there as a dot. What this does now is when it brings it in, by default, it's that color. That's great and all, but one of the cool things that this enables you to do is you can cut, you know, and you can take this half, make that one color, take that half, make it another color. But when you bring it in again, it still comes in as whatever color that you had it set. So you can still change the colors. This is just pretty much just changing your default color. So that's uh, one way that you can go about, you know, editing the colors. Um, additionally, if we were to uh, take, let's say, uh, over here, we want to change this little tab here because you could end up having a bunch of different bins uh, when you have big projects. You can also right click on here and then color tag. You could change that color tag. Now, if I come up here, you can see that it's uh, that blue color now. So now I'll know, okay, that's where these are, you know, and I can dive in and then grab those. If you have like multiple sets of B-roll, you could set, you know, for all the different locations, different colors, and then, you know, that could match what the actual clip comes out as, as a color as well. So that's kind of like clip colors. Uh, if we were to then take, let's say these clips here and right click and make them into a, a uh, compound clip, what's going to happen is those clips will still be clips uh, with their colors. So if I open this in a new uh, timeline, you can see our other timeline. We have all the colors here, but now this is being treated as a different clip. So if I come into here, I have my compound clip here. I could also change this color to something specific. And now every time I bring that in, it'll come in as that color. Um, so when you create a fusion clip or a compound clip, that new clip that you're creating is kind of being treated as its own entity, but inside of it, it's being powered by whatever the clips are inside of that. Uh, hopefully you can follow me on that one. All right, so that is kind of clip colors, right? And that's just an easy way to see um, you know, its position and, you know, you could have like a multiple of these and then, you know, you can see that. Okay, great. Now let's say we have a shot that is like this, where it's a truck going down the road and maybe we're, we're working on a project where we want to have this, but maybe this truck on the side of it has a big logo, right? So what we'll need to do is if we ever use this clip, we want to uh, make sure that we address that logo. Right? We have to blur it out because we won't have the rights to whatever that project is, or it could be license plates or people's faces, whatever it may be. Right, So we want to be able to always 
represent that. So if I was to bring this in, obviously we can have its color and then we can change it, right? But what happens is if I would cut this, now I have two different individual pieces that I could change colors. But when I pass this off to my colorist and they can go into DaVinci and blur something for me, they're not gonna know that these two clips unless I you know, let them know beforehand and make sure that they know which, where it's at. So that's the cool thing about uh, flags. So what I can do is I can click on this clip, right? And I can come up here and I can click a flag. And what ends up happening is wherever that clip is used in your project, even if it's different portions of whatever, you know, that uh, um, clip itself was before it's chopped on your timeline, wherever that is, it will always have that flag. So then I can put these wherever I want to. And when I come into any of my other uh, areas, we'll now have these flags here, right? I can come over to here and we'll now have these flags. So they'll be there. And the cool thing with flags is I can double click on it and I could write a note. So now, if maybe we have a VFX artist, maybe they want to take a stab at it, they can say, okay, what's this? Okay, blur the truck. So then they know, or if we don't have anyone that's dealing with Fusion, and we can come over to the color tab because we have the ability to blur things, right? We can say, okay, what is this? Okay, blur the truck. All right, now, then you know that you, those different things that you have to do. Um, so that's the kind of that's kind of cool, and we'll also have it over here. It's kind of all over DaVinci. Anywhere you look and you see that clip, it'll you know jump out, and you'll see that. Uh, you can also change the colors. You can see we have all these different colors here. So if we click on it, we can take this particular flag here. We double click on it, and we can change its color to something else, right? Uh, we can also put multiple flags on clips. So if I wanted to, I'm on this clip right here, I can come in here and say, I want the blue. And now I have the two flags and we can write two different notes for these flags. So if we're, you know, we have someone that's doing the blurring, we can say, okay, make sure that you look at all of the pink flags. And then in the, in the flag itself, it'll tell you what needs to be blurred or whatever it may be for your project, however you're setting it up. Uh, but that's a really cool way to be able to take, okay, this raw material needs to be affected in a particular way. Let's make sure that everywhere in our timeline, anywhere in our process of getting this from raw, in from raw footage to end product, that these particular clips are tagged and it's very visible. Because you can, you can write stuff in the metadata, but it's not visible unless someone's looking for it. With the colors on the clips, and the flags, it's very visible. It, you know, it lets you know that these clips need to have adjustments. So you might be saying, why not just use a marker instead of a flag? Well, the flag is represented for that whole clip. It doesn't matter what portion you use, where a marker is a very specific point in time. So let's go into markers a little bit. There's two different ways to set markers. You can set markers on the timeline and you can set markers on the clip itself. So if I was on the timeline, currently we see that we have the timeline selected, right? It's just the timeline. If I click marker, now we have a marker right here, right? On the timeline. So I can move anything and we have like the snap point. What a lot of people end up doing is they will make markers for different points in the audio if they're like editing the audio. You'll see that a lot because then you can like snap to it, right? Additionally, we can come in and we can say, okay, there was a spot, you know, let's say, let's say that there, this was raining and there was a spot. We could be on the clip itself and add a marker. Now we have a marker on the actual clip itself. You see that? And we can grab another one and now we can snap to that particular marker if we want to. So that's a kind of cool thing we can also do is we can snap to these markers. Um, with the markers, we can click on them and we can also add notes and information if we wanted to. We can change which color they are. Um, to add a marker, we're just going to hit M to add a marker. Uh, if you're actually selected on something, when you hit M, it'll add it into that clip itself. If it's not on that clip, you hit M, it'll add it up here. If you are adding a marker, but you want to add information, you're going to hold uh, control and hit M, and then it's just gonna open this up. You can then neighbor marker and put in the information. They're both exactly the same. Uh, it's just that when it 
the, with the action of holding control and hitting M, it will open up the prompt to put the information in. If you hit M, let's say we hit M here, but we wanted to add information onto it, we could just double click on it and then add that information in. Uh, the same way, uh, if we come over to our edit, we can now see our um, markers here. They're all kind of jumbled. So let's go back and make some that are all over the place. Um, so now we come over here, we can see our different markers, we can click on them and we can get the information just like the same way with the flags. Um, the biggest difference is that the flags carry over into other timelines. So let's say we were working on a shot where we use B-roll in this particular project. And then let's come back here to our main uh, timeline and add another timeline. Now we have another timeline here. And then we came into here and we added this clip into here. We don't have any of the markers now, but we have all the flags. So the flag's still here. I can double click on it and we can see blur the truck. So we know that that particular file, we have to blur the truck. Um, if you end up for some reason doing some type of editing where you end up turning this into a compound clip, what's going to happen now is now this is being treated as a new clip. It's being treated as new material. So it won't have the flag information. But if we were to look at this timeline, the timeline for this, we'll still have that information here. So it's just something to keep in mind if you end up uh, making compound nodes or fusion nodes, is that that is treated as new material itself. So it won't have the, the characteristics of that other clip uh, when it comes to like labels, labels and colors. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how they all work. The uh, the oh God, keyboard shortcuts for these are just G for the flags and M for the markers, but that is just depending on what you have selected here. So if I pick pink, or let's go over here, let's pick pink, and then I hit M, I'm gonna make a pink, right? And then if I change this to another color, I'm going to make that other color. So what these two uh, keyboard shortcuts are, are uh, using the selected and selected is whatever is selected over here for the colors. You can make keyboard shortcuts for all of the different colors here, or you can just use the defaults, which are whatever is selected here. So let's go into here and then let's look at M. So current selected, what current selected is uh, under uh, add marker. So I could change the colors to whatever I want, or I can just use the selected. Like I said, the selected is just what's here. And the same way with the G. If I look at the G here, select it, add flag, current selected. Um, and it's the same thing for all the colors there. Um, so that's kind of how you would add them. Um, and one thing that you'll notice is when we come up to a marker, it'll be up here and that will have, it'll have the name of the marker. So if there's something specific, you know, you'll then have that as an overlay up here. Obviously that won't come out in the render, but it's just there for when you're editing and the same way when you come over to the color tab, it'll have it there um, as information. So that's kind of how they work. Additionally, like this clip here has two different um, audio sources. And I know it that this one right here in the middle is going to be mono. So I need to make sure that that channel here is mono. So I would just come into here, change this to mono. But the, additionally, what I could do is I could hold alt and highlight just that portion and change that particular color. So I know that this audio channel is a mono channel. Um, so I have to make sure that all of these are also whoops, mono channels as well uh, for audio. Or if they're not, I have to highlight them and pull them down to a, you know, a stereo channel um, if they are a different channel. And the cool thing is when you highlight just one particular one, like if I was to highlight this without holding alt, it's going to highlight everything. I change the color. It's going to change it for everything by holding down alt. You're able to just highlight the one, uh, out of the whole group, out of the whole linked group. So we have our video track and then our two audio tracks here. So I think that covers everything for the, uh, the changing of the colors for the clips and the audio channels, as well as making markers, how to use the different colored markers, how to make the markers, edit the markers, as well as the uh, flags, how they work, 
and then being able to um, see them throughout all of Da Vinci's suite um, for when you're jumping from uh, page to page and being able to have those markers for other people that are working on the project as well so that they can you know make sure that they're doing their portion of whatever you have flagged so with that being said let me know in the comments if you guys already use these if you use them in a different manner what do you do with them um, as well as if you have any ideas, suggestions that you want to throw my way. If you haven't been to the Facebook group, uh, there's a link down in the description. You can come over there, join that. If you have questions on your project that you're working on, you can ask them over there. But with that being said, my name's JR and thanks for watching.